you know, one of the things I had my students do was I asked them to derive pi. I said, what's pi? And they said, 3.14159267 something, something, something. I said, OK, why? They said, what do you mean? I said, well, how do you know that that's pi? And they said, well, it's pi. That's what it is. It's, it's in the book. Like, you learn that that's what's pi. I said, all right, have we always known that that's what pi was? They looked at me. Yes. I said, really? I said, no, we haven't. We figured that out. Um, I said, well, how? I said, well, what, what, is, what is pi? And they thought about it f for a minute, and they said, it's something with circles, isn't it? I said, yeah, all right, it's something with circles, sure. I said, well, what is it with circles? And, and we, worked, you know, we worked our way through, and it's, it's the ratio of the circumference of a circle to the circle's diameter. I said, OK. I said, so figure it out. I said, what do you mean? I said, here's a circle. I gave him a circle. I said, here's a diameter. I gave him a diameter. I said, figure out what pi is. They said, it's 3.14. What do you mean? I said, well, look, you know, s someone in history looked at a circle and a diameter and said, I wonder if there's a ratio between those two. And they said, I wonder if it's the same. Um, they said, really? I said, yeah, so some someone worked this out for the first time. Um, so I set the students to working through it. It took them a while. Um, you know, eventually they said, well, what, what if we kind of draw a square in and we draw a square outside? We know that, you know, that pi is somewhere, you know, the ratio is somewhere between those two things. I said, okay, that, that's a good start, but it's not real accurate, right? There's a lot of area that's outside the square, and then there's a lot of area that's, that's not inside the bigger square. You know, what, what do you do about that? And they said, what if we draw a hexagon? I said, okay, draw a hexagon. So they did that, and, and it took them the better part of an hour to figure out how to, how to sort out the areas of the hexagons, but they did. And I said, all right, that's interesting. Still not accurate enough. They'd gotten it to about 3.1. I said, do better than that. They said, oh, you're cruel. So they drew a 12-sided polygon and worked out the area for that, and then they said, we think there's a formula that, that, that'll work for any polygon. Said, really? So again, a day's worth of class, they'd worked out a formula that they thought was pretty convincing. And I said, do you know whose footsteps you're following here? And they said, no. I said, yeah, this is Archimedes. Archimedes worked out this method for computing pi. I said, really? So then we looked at Archimedes, and we read through his work where he described his method of computing pi, and the student said, oh, that's what we've been doing. Right? Y you know, so here, in some sense, you have students who are, who are following in the footsteps of a mathematician who worked some number of years before, I don't know, how, when, when did Archimedes, 20, 2,500 years before? Um, so here you have students following in the footsteps of a mathematician who worked 2,500 years before them. Um, th that is, Archimedes started a conversation about circles and about lines, right? And what Archimedes said about circles and lines is still relevant today. Um, students can follow what he said about them, you know, and, and can, can work through what led Archimedes to say the things that he did. And the eventual goal is for students to be able to say things on their own, right? We, we read, we learn English so, so that our students can go off and write new things, right? With mathematics, if you follow that conversation, if you learn, you know, it turns out that triangles are really, really interesting. You know, here are all the things we say about triangles. You can build on that, and maybe someday the students will go off and say something new about triangles that no human being has said before. That's the great conversation of mathematics, you know, is, is we have people consistently adding to what we've said about, about math.